In this exercise, we would like to answer the following questions. We are told that a ball is kicked at 20 meters per second at an angle of theta radians. What is the optimal angle to kick the ball and have it land as far away as possible? And then with that angle, when does it land and how far down the field does it land? This is a projectile motion problem, so we are going to start with acceleration, then work to velocity, and then work to position. Working with SI units, let's take the acceleration downwards due to gravity to be negative 9.8 meters per second squared. That affects the vertical component only, so we can set up our acceleration vector as the vector a of t, zero, negative 9.8. Now from acceleration, let's move to velocity. To get the velocity vector, which I'll call v of t, we're going to do term by term anti-differentiation of the acceleration vector. Let me first anti-differentiate each coordinate, and then I want to show you how I would prefer to organize this. So the antiderivative of zero is just a constant. There are going to be two here, so let me label that c sub one. And then the antiderivative of negative 9.8 is negative 9.8t plus some other constant. I would rather organize this by keeping those constants in their own separate vector. So let me write this as zero and negative 9.8t plus C1, C2. And the reason why I wanted to separate this constant vector is to point out to you that this is going to be the initial velocity. We're going to find this vector using the first sentence in the problem. The information that the ball is kicked at 20 meters per second tells us the speed at the moment that we kick the ball. So 20 is going to be the magnitude of the initial velocity. And then we're told that it's kicked at some angle that we are going to work out later, but that angle gives us a sense of direction. So I think it's helpful in this moment to decompose this vector into a magnitude times a unit length sense of direction. Looking at this pair of terms I just wrote down, you might think I've done something pointless because the magnitudes are gonna cancel out and all I have is that the initial velocity equals the initial velocity. But actually, this product helps us identify how to set up the initial velocity using the pieces of information that we have. So any non-zero vector can always be written this way, as a magnitude times a unit vector indicating the sense of direction. That's all a vector is. It's a magnitude and a sense of direction. So here, our magnitude is 20. And our unit length sense of direction, as it so often is expressed, is going to be cosine of theta, sine of theta. Theta here is something that we're going to work out, so theta is to be determined. Going back to our computation, working out the velocity in general, I'm now actually going to put everything together into one vector to say that the velocity over time is going to be zero plus 20 cosine of theta. So let's just write 20 cosine of theta and negative 9.8t plus 20 sine of theta. In a similar way, we will now get the position function. Our vector valued function for position is going to be the term by term antiderivative of the velocity vector that we just wrote down. Following the thought process I wrote on the second line, let me anti-differentiate the coordinates we have, and then we'll add to that the initial position. So I'm not going to pick up constants in my first vector. I'm just going to write that the antiderivative of 20 cosine of theta with respect to t is going to be 20 cosine, and I better put this in parentheses, cosine of theta times t. Because while we don't know what theta is, it is just going to be a given number. So 20 cosine of theta is a constant. So I've anti-differentiated that constant with respect to t. And then for the second term, it's going to be negative 4.9 t squared plus 20 sine of theta times t. And then in the act of anti-differentiating, both of these are going to pick up constants, which we can think of as the initial position. However, this vector is just going to be zero because we're launching our ball from the ground. So the vertical component is zero, and then the horizontal component will just set to be zero. We'll say the place where we kick the ball is x equals zero. 
That would usually be the case for the lateral component, but for the vertical component, if I had been standing on a table one meter high when I kicked the ball, then our initial position vector would look like zero comma one. All right, take a moment to pause this video if you're still writing any of this down, because when I come back, I'm going to condense everything we've written down for acceleration, velocity, and position at the top of the slide so that we can finish our computation. Now we can start answering the three questions that we'd like to address. So what is the optimal angle? That's going to be solving for a theta value. When does it land? That's going to be solving for a T value. And how far down the field does it land? That's going to look at information from the first coordinate, the X direction. While these questions are ordered asking for the angle first, we are actually going to find that last. What we are going to do is now find when it lands that's looking for a little t value, but we're going to solve for it in terms of the unknown theta. Okay, when does the ball land? Is asking for what time values is the height or the y component of this position vector zero? So when is y of t zero? All right, so I'm going to say, let's set zero equal to negative 4.9 t squared plus 20 sine of the unknown angle theta times t, and then plus zero. This is a degree two polynomial. If that initial height had not been zero, but say plus one or something like that, you would probably want to use the quadratic formula. In this situation though, I can factor t in front. I only have two terms to write t times negative 4.9t plus 20 sine of theta. This product is zero when either factor is zero. The first factor is just t, but t equals zero corresponds to the moment we kick the ball. So it's in the second component that will give us the information about t. So now we set that equal to zero. Isolating t, we find that t at the landing points, maybe I'll denote it t sub l, is 20 sine of theta divided by 4.9. Notice that's in terms of the unknown angle theta. Different angles will produce different landing times. We still have to work out what theta is, so we'll just leave this as a formula for the landing time in terms of theta. Pause if you're still writing this down, otherwise I'm going to give us some more space to figure out how far down the field the ball lands. How far down the field does it land is asking for us to find information about the x coordinate. So that's this first coordinate. We want to know what that x coordinate is when the ball lands on the ground. So that's like saying just evaluate x of t sub l. So we have that's 20 cosine of theta. Now for t, I'm going to plug in 20 sine of theta divided by 4.9. All right, so that's 400 divided by 4.9. Just leave it like that. Don't try to do some decimal approximation there. Times cosine of theta sine of theta. Let's pause here for a moment because while we've found an expression for how far down the field the ball lands, we still have to answer the first question, which is what would be the best theta to maximize this distance? So now that I know an expression for the distance in terms of theta, we want to optimize that expression as a function of theta. In order to do that, I'm actually going to reduce this expression from a product of two trig functions that have theta in them to just one. So this is going to be using the double angle formula. Sine of two theta is two cosine of theta sine of theta. Here I have cosine of theta sine of theta. Let me do some rearrangement. I'm going to bring in a two and then take 400 and change it to 200 so that it's still 400, but I'm writing it as 200 times two because now we can take two cosine of theta sine of theta and replace that with sine of two theta. This isn't mandatory. I just prefer seeing it this way because I'm about to take a derivative in order to solve an optimization problem. And like this, I avoid the product rule. I just have one single uh, trig function to differentiate. Okay, 
So let's recap where we are so far. We've solved for when it lands in terms of theta. We've also solved for how far down the field it lands in terms of theta. We are now going to determine the optimal angle theta to maximize this expression for how far away the ball lands. The independent variable in these equations of motion is time, but I'm now going to optimize in terms of theta. To avoid confusion because our x-coordinate is a function of time, I'm going to invent a new function, f, and say that f of theta is 200 divided by 4.9 times sine of 2 theta. This is now a calculus optimization problem. We need to take the derivative and find critical points. So let's compute f prime of theta. That's going to be 200 divided by 4.9 times cosine of 2 theta times 2 because of the chain rule. To find critical points, we want to know when this is 0. And that expression is going to be 0 whenever cosine of 2 theta is 0. What angles give us a cosine value of 0? Pi over 2, like 90 degrees, 3 pi over 2, 5 pi over 2, etc. Or we could rotate the other way around the unit circle, have negative pi over 2, negative 3 pi over 2, etc. So now we'd like to say, well, when is 2 theta equal to pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, or negative pi over 2, negative 3 pi over 2? You might realize that most of those angles we can immediately reject because we're talking about kicking a ball into the air. So kicking it straight up would be like having theta equal pi over 2. There's no reason to consider 5 pi over 2, 7 pi over 2. Those are just duplicates. However, theta equal 3 pi over 2, negative pi over 2, that would be like kicking the ball straight into the ground. That doesn't make any sense. So the only realistic solution here is 2 theta equals pi over 2. Or in other words, theta is pi over 4. That's not too surprising because that's 45 degrees. If you imagine kicking a ball, that's probably what you would instinctively aim to do. You don't want to kick it straight up. This is going to be the best way to kick the soccer ball so that it goes as far down the field as possible. All right, now that we have the optimal angle as pi over 4, we just need to plug it into the expressions for the landing time and the landing place. Let me see if I can do that in a way that's not too messy. I'm just going to kind of add it to my expression up here for the landing time. Sine of theta is square root of 2 over 2. So if I multiply that by 20 over 4.9, I'll have 20 square root of 2 over 9.8. And then for how far it travels down the field, might be easier to look at the expression I have for f of theta. We have 200 divided by 4.9 times sine of pi over 2. But sine of pi over 2 is just 1. So actually, this is 200 divided by 4.9. I'll finish just by mentioning the units here. Time is in seconds. And the landing point down the field is in meters. OK, that wraps up this problem. Thank you for your attention.